Have you ever wondered why we're so fascinated by the underdogs who dare to think differently? They're the ones who don't follow the crowd, who take risks that others wouldn't, and who end up reshaping the world in unexpected ways. This is the story of Kajiva, the underdog with a dream, and the audacious journey of their V4 500cc Grand Prix motorcycle. While they may not have claimed the ultimate victory on the track, their legacy endures as a testament to the unwavering spirit of those who refuse to be overshadowed by the giants. However, to truly grasp the significance of Kajiva's creation, we must first journey back to a metal workshop in the 1950s, where the seeds of their ambition and the V4 500cc Grand Prix were sown. Back in 1950, Giovanni Castiglione laid the foundation for Kajiva in Varese by producing metal components. It wasn't until 1978, under the ambition of Giovanni's sons, Claudio and Gianfranco, that Kajiva ventured into the world of motorcycles. Their first offerings? Two dynamic racing motorcycles piloted by Gianfranco Bonera and Marco Lucinelli. Capitalizing on this momentum, Kajiva took a strategic decision to purchase a factory in Varese's Skirana, previously in the hands of Air Mackey AMF Harley-Davidson. By the end of 1979, the factory was bustling, churning out a whopping 40,000 motorcycles. Their range was diverse, from sprightly 125cc models to more robust 350cc machines, all running on two-stroke engines. But Kajiva wasn't just about quantity, they were about reinvention. They seamlessly integrated several Harley-Davidson models into their lineup, rebranded as Kajivas. The off-road territory became their playground, where they introduced innovations and produced their race-winning WMX series of motocross motorcycles. The off-roaders were not just functional, they bore the marks of craftsmanship and power. For instance, the W12 350cc became a favorite among the Italian army due to its agility and might. The 1980s saw Kajiva expanding its horizons. In 1983, they collaborated with Ducati, integrating their powerful four-stroke V-twin engines, ranging from 350cc to a whopping 1000cc. This partnership blossomed further in 1985 when Kajiva acquired Ducati. However, recognizing Ducati's global appeal, Kajiva retained the brand. This acquisition led to the birth of iconic motorcycles like the Kajiva Ala Azura and the Elephant, both roaring with Ducati engines under their chassis. Kajiva's reputation was now cemented. They were not just manufacturers, but innovators, not just racers, but champions. Their motocross bikes, introduced in the early 1980s, were renowned for their powerful engines and groundbreaking designs. A testament to their commitment was their MX line of bikes, uniquely designed with a single spring in the front forks, revolutionizing suspension dynamics. By the time discussions of the V4 500cc began, Kajiva had already established itself as a force to be reckoned with, backed by a rich history of innovation, strategic partnerships, and racing triumphs. The stage was set for their next big offering. But as history has shown, the road ahead was filled with unexpected twists and turns. The early 1990s began with Kajiva attempting to outclass their Japanese counterparts in the ferocious world of 500cc Grand Prix racing. Driven by Italian passion, commitment, and energy, the Kajiva GP500 was released in various iterations, including the C587, V593, C594, aiming to capitalize on the ever-growing motorcycle market. The Kajiva C594 stands out as an engineering marvel. Its heart, a two-stroke 498cc V4 engine, thumped out a potent 177 bhp at 12,600 rpm. Alongside the raw power, the bike showcased a hybrid carbon fiber aluminum twin spar chassis and a carbon fiber swing arm, all while weighing a mere 122 kilos. Incorporating cutting-edge technology for its era, the C594 sported programmable EEPROM chips for variable ignition time, a state-of-the-art fuel injection system, and a pioneering traction control system. 
One of its standout features was the TAG 4.8C ECU, developed by TAG Electronic Systems, which was integral in providing advanced fueling, ignition capabilities, and sophisticated data logging. Over its racing lifespan, the GP500 was piloted by legends such as Eddie Lawson, Randy Mamola, John Kaczynski, Doug Chandler, Alex Barros, and Matt Mladen. Of the notable victories, Eddie Lawson's triumph at the 1992 Hungarian Motorcycle Grand Prix at Hungaroring stands tall as the first 500cc Motorcycle Grand Prix victory for the Kajiba GP500. In 1994, American rider John Kaczynski dazzled fans with his prowess on the C594, one of the most visually stunning 500cc GP bikes of the time. The bike's finesse was evident when Roland Brown rode the C593, describing it as feeling maneuverable and perfectly responsive. It might have seemed docile at first, but as Brown further delved into the throttle, the beast within the Kajiva unleashed, showcasing its breathtaking acceleration and power. With that said, Kajiva's journey in the racing circuit wasn't always smooth. The massive investment in the GP racing almost led them to bankruptcy, which later resulted in selling Ducati to American investors. But the legacy of the Kajiva GP500 cannot be overlooked. The bike remains a testament to Italian ingenuity and the dream to challenge the established norms of the racing world. Yet, in the realm of motorsports, it's not only about sheer power and design, but also about being consistent and adaptable. Fast forward 35 years from the birth of the Kajiva GP500, we can see that despite moments of victory, there were hidden problems that held the motorcycle back from reaching its full potential and meeting the high expectations. The late 1980s and early 1990s were pivotal years for motorcycle enthusiasts and manufacturers alike. The motorcycle market witnessed rapid technological advancements and competition was fierce. The Grand Prix racing scene was primarily dominated by Japanese manufacturers, including Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, and Kawasaki. These brands had already secured their positions in the market with high-performance, reliable motorcycles backed by substantial R&D investments. Kajiva's entry into this established arena was seen by many as a brave, if not audacious, move. The Kajiva V4 500cc was not just competing against individual models, but against a legacy of dominance by the Japanese motorcycle industry. This was a period marked by the rise of aerodynamic fairings, advanced suspension technologies, and a push for more power while ensuring rider safety. Kajiva, with its Italian flair for design and engineering, had to offer something genuinely unique to break through. Upon its debut, the Kajiva V4 500cc Grand Prix motorcycle was met with curiosity and intrigue. The motorcycle world was always keen on seeing underdogs challenge the established order, and here was Kajiva, an Italian manufacturer, trying to do just that. Media outlets and critics were keenly watching the bike's performance on the racing circuits. While there was praise for its design and the sheer ambition behind the project, consistent victories eluded the V4. The feedback often revolved around its potential, but also its inability to consistently outperform its Japanese rivals. The motorcycle magazines and journals of the time highlighted its strengths and pointed out areas where improvements were needed. Sales figures, especially for the commercial Kajiva V589 model, reflected the challenges the bike faced. While there was an initial interest due to the racing connection, sales dwindled as the motorcycle faced competition from more established and trusted brands. Many enthusiasts opted for proven performance and reliability over novelty. Kajiva's strategy was clear leverage the racing heritage and the unique Italian design to create a niche in the market. The marketing materials and campaigns highlighted the bike's Grand Prix connections, emphasizing its high-performance lineage. The brand's Italian origin was also front and center, banking on the country's reputation for producing stylish, high-performance vehicles. In terms of pricing, the Kajiva V589 was positioned as a premium offering, reflecting its limited production nature and the advanced technology it borrowed from its racing counterpart. 
This, however, posed a challenge. Many potential buyers struggled to see the value in opting for the Kajiva V589 over more established and sometimes more affordable options from Japanese manufacturers. Although the Kajiva V4500cc Grand Prix motorcycle was a symbol of Italian ambition and design prowess, it was not devoid of criticisms from racers and enthusiasts alike. Several technical issues emerged, reflecting the challenges of creating a racing machine that could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best in the world. One of the commonly voiced complaints was related to the motorcycle's reliability, especially during prolonged high-speed runs. Racers and riders noted that, while the bike showed promise in short bursts, maintaining peak performance over longer durations was a challenge. There were reports of engine overheating and minor electrical glitches that affected the motorcycle's consistent performance. Another concern was the bike's handling at high speeds. While Italian bikes are often praised for their nimble handling, the Kajiva V4 faced challenges in maintaining stability, especially when cornering. From a design perspective, while the Kajiva V4 exuded Italian elegance, certain functional elements seem to have been overlooked. The aerodynamics, for instance, while sleek, did not always provide the optimal downforce needed during high-speed races, affecting the bike's stability and cornering ability. The placement and design of the exhaust system were also brought into question as they sometimes interfered with the optimal flow of air, leading to engine overheating issues. Furthermore, the weight distribution of the bike, combined with its suspension setup, meant that it did not always offer the desired feedback to the rider, making it challenging to handle on treacherous circuits and conditions. The Japanese juggernauts of the 1980s and 1990s were at the forefront of motorcycle racing technology. Brands like Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki had motorcycles that were not only powerful, but also reliable and well-engineered. In comparison, while the Kajiva V4 boasted impressive specs on paper, its real-world performance was often inconsistent. Competing bikes from the Japanese manufacturers offered better throttle response, a broader power band, and superior aerodynamics. These bikes were often more user-friendly, providing racers with the confidence to push the limits. Furthermore, the Japanese bikes had the advantage of years of R&D and iterative improvements. Every year, based on feedback from racers and real-world performance, these bikes underwent refinements that made them even better. Kajiva, while ambitious, was relatively new to this level of competition and was in many ways playing catch-up. And so, in terms of sheer engineering, the Japanese motorcycles were often seen as more advanced. Their integration of electronic aids, better material choices, and optimized designs gave them an edge over the Kajiva V4. The introduction and performance of the Kajiva V4 500cc Grand Prix motorcycle were met with high expectations, given the significant investment and ambition behind the project. However, its challenges in both the racing circuit and the commercial market led to a period of introspection for the Kajiva brand. Sales of the commercial model, the Kajiva V589, were modest, and the brand's hopes of leveraging their Grand Prix endeavors for substantial commercial success remained unfulfilled. The limited successes on the racing front and the commercial challenges took a toll on the brand's image. While Kajiva was known for its quality and design, the V4500cc project, in many eyes, represented a missed opportunity. However, Kajiva's experience with the V4500cc Grand Prix motorcycle served as a sobering reminder of the challenges of the high-stakes world of motorcycle racing and commercial sport bike production. For Kajiva, it was clear that merely producing a technically impressive motorcycle wasn't enough. Consistency, reliability, and understanding the unique dynamics of racing circuits were equally crucial. In subsequent years, Kajiva shifted some of its focus. While still maintaining a presence in racing, the company took a more measured approach, focusing on producing quality motorcycles that resonated with a broader audience and learning from the feedback and challenges of the V4 project. For the motorcycle industry at large, the Kajiva V4 served as a case study. 
As newer brands and models tried to break into the racing and commercial scene, the lessons from Kajiva's endeavors acted as both a cautionary tale and a source of inspiration, emphasizing the importance of thorough R&D, understanding market dynamics, and building brand loyalty. All in all, the Kajiva V4 500cc Grand Prix motorcycle, despite its promising start and the considerable resources invested in its development, fell short of expectations due to a complex interplay of factors. While its design and engineering showcased Italian craftsmanship and innovation, technical and mechanical shortcomings prevented it from consistently matching or outperforming its established Japanese competitors. These technical issues not only affected its on-track performance, but also its usability and appeal in the commercial market. Coupled with the stiff competition and rapidly evolving technological advancements of the time, Kajiva's ambitious project struggled to find a firm footing. Market reception was lukewarm, further exacerbated by marketing and distribution strategies that might not have fully capitalized on its potential. While Kajiva had the vision, passion, and drive, the V4 500cc's challenges underscore the harsh realities of the motorcycle racing and commercial world, where even a potent mix of resources, talent, and ambition might not always guarantee success.